Welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk here about chronic myelogenous leukemia. This one comes up a lot on your exam, so you got to know this one. I would say out of all of the four leukemias, five if you include Harry, um, this is probably the most tested, and it's very common. Um, so you will want to know this one front and back, and everything I've included here is the high-yield stuff. So uh, it, this may go 10, 11 minutes, but... Uh, you'll want to know this stuff. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel and you will get notifications each and every time I put a new video up. This is the blood cancer family tree. Just remember that we always start with a precursor, lives in the bone marrow. Gradually they mature going down the line depending on the cells that you need to have. And remember there are different growth factors that'll stimulate, for instance, going down to a red blood cell or going down to a platelet. Remember erythropoietin, thrombopoietin, and so forth. CML is a myeloproliferative disorder that affects one of the myeloid lines, usually further down. So these are mature cells, and often these are neutrophils or granulocytes, like uh, you know any of the granulocytes, basophils, eosinophils, but most commonly neutrophils, basophils, common as well. But it's never lymphocytes. Why? Because that would be CLL. The characteristic mutation is T922. Okay, now. This is probably the one translocation you've got to remember. And the reason is because this gives rise to a very special protein. It's called the bcr able fusion protein. Sometimes you'll see it written as bcr able one uh, Same thing. Uh, this is also known as the Philadelphia chromosome. Okay, so you might see it written pH positive. Now, this fusion protein is a tyrosine kinase, and that stimulates... Uh, the cell cycle. So you get this unchecked proliferation. It's always on. The BCR able fusion protein is always on. So you're going to get massive proliferation. However, it's not fast enough to where it causes an acute leukemia. About half of CML patients are going to be asymptomatic at, di at diagnosis. If they are symptomatic, it's going to be very nonspecific, constitutional signs. About half of the patients who are symptomatic, however, will have a splenomegaly. Now, how does that present? You're not having patients coming in and saying, oh, doc, my spleen, it's big. No, what they're going to tell you is they're going to say, oh, I've got this fullness kind of in my, in my belly or even more commonly because the spleen is right next to the stomach and it's pressing up. The stomach's not going to be able to expand as well, and so they're going to get early satiety. That's another way that splenomegaly may show up. You do your physical exam, it should be pretty obvious that you're dealing with splenomegaly. Average age for CML is 65 years. So this is not a disease of young people. This is elderly people, and it is associated with radiation and benzene. So radiation, really any of these leukemias, radiation is a big cause. So think of patients who have already been uh, treated for some other cancer or maybe some chemotherapeutics. Um, so look for a history of some kind of unrelated cancer. By the way, I would say uh, this is the most important mutation, but another one, probably close second, T1221, ALL. That's in kids. This is the, uh, the translocation. Remember, translocation is where a piece of one chromosome moves to another, and then a piece of that chromosome moves to the first one. That's called a reciprocal translocation. Okay, so the best initial diagnostic test is a CBC with peripheral smear. What are we looking for? We're looking for granulocytes. When you see a ton of them, that is suspicious. You want to differentiate this from a leukamoid reaction, and usually it's going to be pretty apparent based on the history. Uh, however, uh, what we see is uh, with a leukamoid reaction, so you've got an elevated white count due to an infection or something like that. As the white count goes up, the leukocyte alkaline phosphatase, or LAP, level or index goes up as well. So it should be high if you have a reactive lymphocytosis or a leukamoid reaction like due to an infection. If however the LAP index is low then you're likely dealing with a leukemia. The CBC may show a normocytic anemia but often with CML the other cell lines are not really affected at least early on. Uh, the best next step upon suspicion is a PCR to detect BCR-ABLE. 
often written ABL1. Uh, if that's positive, you're almost certainly dealing with CML. However, you will have to do a bone marrow biopsy because you have to stage it, okay? Now, there are three phases, and this, were, this is where staging comes into play. So there's the chronic phase where they'll have a very low level, if any, blasts, and this is usually asymptomatic. It lasts for years, I think six, seven, eight years. Infection and bleeding complications are very rare at this stage. Then we have an accelerated phase, and that's where we're kind of transitioning into the blast crisis. So this should be suspected when the CBC shows an abrupt increase in basophils or a decrease in platelets, because what that's telling you is that we're kind of starting to crowd things out a little bit in the bone marrow. And then a blast crisis where we have more than 20% blasts, and clinically this looks like AML. Okay. The best initial therapy for CML is imatinib. Imatinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It's a very small molecule. And what it does is it inhibits that bcr able tyrosine kinase. And that is going to stop cellular proliferation, ideally, if it works. Uh, there are other drugs that are like it that basically do the same thing, but imatinib is the one you'll go for. Um, you will not be asked to choose between imatinib and, and nilotinib and uh, other drugs of the same family. The most definitive therapy, however, remains allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplant, also called a bone marrow transplant. Um, so uh, allogeneic just means it comes from somebody else. But if you have a twin or something like that, that would be better. Um, so this is reserved for patients that, so when do we do uh, bone marrow transplant? Number one, no response to imatinib or any of the other drugs, okay? Um, number two, they got to be healthy, okay? And the reason is because before we do the transplant, we have to eradicate their immune system, and that's really dangerous. So you're not going to be doing this for a little 85-year-old woman. We're talking, you know, 47-year-old, otherwise healthy guy. Yeah, we, we might do it. But there's really, really good response to imatinib. It's a very effective drug. It's also a pretty clean drug, too. Um, not many side effects, unlike the, uh, the cytotoxics. Complications, leukostasis is basically sludging due to uh, immense amount of white blood cells, usually higher than 300,000. Not super common. Blast crisis, basically we're moving into more of an acute leukemia picture. So to recap, CML is a myeloproliferative disorder affecting one of the myeloid cell lines, usually neutrophils, uh, but never lymphocytes. Blasts should not be seen on peripheral smear. That would be AML. Okay. Now, you will see blasts to some degree on your bone marrow biopsy. Best initial test, CBC with peripheral smear. You'll see prominent myeloid cells. They're usually mature. They're always mature. Basophilia, neutrophilia, eosinophilia will show up on your CBC. Next step is a PCR, looking for the bcr able gene. Most accurate test, bone marrow biopsy with karyotype analysis. This is really for staging, and that's based on the percentage that are blasts. The frontline therapy is imatinib. Remember, tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Remember that it's that bcr able gene, which is due to the T922 translocation, reciprocal translocation. And if that doesn't work, if they're healthy, if they're a candidate, bone marrow transplant.